Welcome back. The last you saw of this radio was me uh, checking out the reception and we determined that there was FM and we had a very, very weak uh, reception on AM. I did the checking of all the circuitry on the, on the front end side, found no problem there. So then I went and looked at the, uh, the IF cans which was a bit of a problem trying to establish which is which because this particular radio I don't have any documentation on the on the uh, alignments so by using the schematic you know you have to be very careful you have to see which co components connect to where um, and you, if you're lucky you hit the right one the way to to work out which is uh, FM and which is the AM coils usually if you look at Let's look at the last one. This one here is fairly easy. You've got that discriminator coil over there. And you'll also notice that these capacitors are very small. This is about 60 picofarads. The one on top here is 200 and something picofarads. The tendency carries through here. 100 picofarads, 5 picofarads. The low capacity values are the FM coils. Okay, the high capacity values are the AM coils. So for the AMIF. So you're trying to adjust only the transformer coils in the um, for the AM. Oops. Here's another one, 250, and that one there is 20. So that's the AM, that's the FM. There was a problem here that I did not expect, and that is, let me show you. That is the inside of one of the AM IF transformer coils. And what you see here is a strange type of screw. That core usually has a screw head on it. Sometimes it's hex, sometimes it's just a normal flat screwdriver head. And you put in your uh, tool and you adjust it. This guy is hexagonal. So you get a, you've got to get a tool that's um, a female hex uh, tool. The only thing I had was this. Okay, with a slight problem, doesn't fit. This is too big. It's metal for a start, which isn't a good idea. And I worked out that this is the same size. Okay, and the problem I had is that I don't have the one for this particular size. So even if I did have it and was prepared to use a metal one, um, this wouldn't fit. So I had to find a solution. I found that only one of these coils had been tampered with. The others are still sealed. Okay. So I was hoping that somebody had messed with this one. And the result is, yes, they did. What I did is I got a, this is actually a syringe cover, which I put around I put it, I put this in there. And then I melted this tightened it up, let it dry and pulled it out. And it's sort of, sort of got the shape and it worked for that purpose. Now I did the alignment. I did the checking of this and it really went up. I mean, this thing went up like crazy and now reception is amazing. Let me show you that. Very clear. For short wave, anyway. Okay, well, I'm really surprised. This is about as good as shortwave reception I've ever received here, um, ever, which is 
amazing from a, a little radio like this. I mean, some of the big ones don't get um, all day across the band. I mean, you'll get part of the day, you'll get some on the bottom end of the band, the shortwave band, and then halfway through, and then it goes up. This thing is receiving quite clearly. Right, here we have it. The Schaub Lorenz Goldie 58. Done. It's been quite a lot of work um, on the, mostly on the chassis. And um, as the guys who've been watching me for a while know, that's not exactly my favorite part, but because it is the part that you see first, obviously it's a part that I pay special attention to. And um, the result here was brilliant. I didn't like that funny faded color over here and um, in trying to take off just the the lacquer to see if I could get away with just lacquering it I found that I had to go down all the way to the wood so this um, cabinet was sanded all the way down to the wood all lacquer removed and um, and then I started layering with the uh, starting with a very diluted uh, varnish. This is a teak color, very diluted. Start putting layers on here. Every time you put a layer, you got to let it dry properly. Then you got to wet sand it very lightly just to make it smooth again. And then again, you, you, you do the next layer, slightly less diluted, and you slowly bring up the color to the color that you want. Now, what I found about this radio, and I realized why this was actually not so much varnished as painted. I think that that tonal, um, the tone that they have on here, you know, fading from very dark to light and dark again, it's actually a paint. It's not so much a varnish because the color, the natural color of the wood itself wasn't particularly nice. You know, it wasn't one of those like some of the Saba's Grundig's and, uh, and you know, the other ones I've done where the wood itself looks fantastic and you, you almost don't want to put any color on it. You just want to put some varnish on it. Um, so this one was slightly different. This one I had to bring up the color and the result was actually pretty good. Now seeing the color of varnish on video is always a bit strange because the camera changes things obviously. But I think you can get an idea. This thing came out very, very well. If you look at the tones that you have on here, these are layered varnish that goes on. And it actually comes out looking much better than before. As I said, I didn't really like it before, but I do like it now. And especially this front section, I like what the result was. I think it matches brilliantly with the, the coloring of the radio. Let's look at some of the other details on here. As you can see, the knobs were all polished and the result was actually quite satisfactory. You have to be very careful with these knobs because if you put any, um, you know, if you use a, a rotary Dremel type cleaner, you can actually melt the plastic. This is um, more modern plastic than some of the other radios. So you actually end up, you can actually end up melting it. So you have to be very, very careful. Um, but there are the, 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 the tuning knobs. The actual frame came out fantastically. There were no scratches, no stains on it. Um, same applies to the cloth with one very, very small exception, which is a little black dot over here, um, which you can hardly see. And sometimes if you try to correct some of these little things, you end up making a bigger mess than you, than you correct. More knobs, all the push buttons were cleaned perfectly. The faceplate, um, actually came out very, very well. There were a couple of very minor chips on the paint from behind. But uh, the way I do it, to get this brown, this is a dark brown, it's almost black. I mix a brown paint, acrylic water base, with black. And you mix around with those, uh, you mix them up till you get the right tone of brown. It's almost black, as I said. And then you just paint it very, very gently with a, with a model brush from behind. And um, you can cover any imperfections in the actual glass, the brown part itself. If you have problems with the gold or the, or the cream, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can still do that. Fortunately, most of the 
little dots that I had here were actually on the brown section. There's one little one here where the creams come out, but I didn't even do anything for that um, because it's just not noticeable and I'd probably make a bigger mess than a correction. The other thing was the, um, the, the light diffuser. The light diffuser on this thing is actually this and it goes behind obviously the, the faceplate and, um, and the, the dial indicators. And what it is, it's actually paper. And obviously it had probably seen some moisture, a lot of heat from uh, the dial lamps themselves. Uh, one of the lamps was obviously changed. If you recall, this one here was burnt out. But I, need, I decided to, to redo this completely. So, and I used just normal wax paper, the ones, the stuff you use in the, in the kitchen, um, and then cut it out you glue this little top lip on here and this goes into these cords that hold it taut in place. So the, wa the paper at the back is, is new and therefore you get this sort of clear look to it. Um, other than that, in terms of the body, there's not that much else I can say. What I can say is that I was actually shocked when I put this in the chassis and put it on, connected it to the internal speaker. And the reason I was shocked is that I use an external speaker. It's just an old speaker that I use externally to, to test these radios. And you, you've seen this thing before. It's, it's, you know, it doesn't have a heavy, heavy magnet. It's an old tube radio speaker. It's pretty big, but it's not particularly powerful. Um, and in terms of bass, it's, it's not that great, but it works and it does the job. So I tend to use that externally. Now, I expected that the result coming out of the radio when I put it back into the, into the cabinet using the radio's actual speaker, I expected it to be more tinny. I expected it to get a hell of a lot less bass because the speaker you have here is about half the size of that thing over there. The result is the exact opposite. Now, it might have to do with the resonance that the whole box gives it, but the result is amazing. It's actually got a little bit too much bass um, if you don't adjust it with the space control. If you don't drop it somewhat, it actually comes out as too much bass, which is not something I expected. So let me show you. I've got it at the moment. The volume is down. Got it in there, um, plugged in. And let me show you what this thing sounds like. So we've got this thing on FM. Volume is down. some really good volume on this thing. Now this thing is using just the internal antenna and um, I'm quite used to not getting that good a reception where I live. Um, on some of the stations I get about three really powerful stations here. The rest are a little bit uh, weaker but, uh, but let me tune through this and show you. See that with full bass is just too boomy. That's zero bass. That sounds about right. Treble control. And here we have music and speech. So what you see is when you put it on music, you get a lot more bass. Um, when you put it on speech, it cuts out the bass and increases mids and highs. So you can hear speech a lot better. This is particularly useful on, F on uh, short wave and medium wave. Esta 
muito cedo, que eu não estou suficiente de cama. A nossa parte, o nosso programa por hoje vai ser. And that's FM. Um, comments. I mean, it's not the most sensitive FM radio that I've restored. Um, it's pretty good, but it's not the most sensitive that I have restored and, and, and worked on. So, um, but it is a very simple circuit. If you look at the, the insides, as, uh, for the size of this thing, it, obviously they, they, they cut a few corners on some of the components and some of the circuitry. So it is, uh, it is actually pretty amazing for the size that they've got on here. The quality of the, of the sound is, is surprising for what one would expect from this size of cabinet and this size of speaker. Without, this is a single speaker, there's no tweeter, there's no uh, electrostatic tweeter or otherwise. You, you've got a full range speaker. So they obviously use a, probably a mid to high mid range you know what I mean, mid-range, but sort of to the higher end of the mid-range, sacrificing probably some of the bass on the speaker itself, and then they use the resonance of the cabinet to give you that, the boomy part of the bass. And you, so you have to control that here, because you can get too much boom, as I've, uh, I've experienced, okay? As for the medium wave and long wave, I get nothing, as usual. That's... Uh, that's Madeira, not, not the radio, that's for all of them. Um, occasionally on, in the evenings, I can actually pick up a French station on 160 kilohertz, uh, which is unexpected over here. But anyway, that's about the only station I've ever picked up on, on, on long wave. Then medium wave, there are very, very few stations, a few from Canary Islands. Short wave, this thing actually picks up quite well. Um, let me show you. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in an external antenna that obviously is essential for shortwave and put it on shortwave As with most of these radios, without any uh, fine tuning, you have to the the uh, the IF of the of the AM section is pretty sharp, so it's very sensitive when it hits a station. But you have to delicately tune into that station because you just tweak it a little bit and you're out of tune. See, it's just a slight twiddle on there and you're out of tune. Let's put it on speech. Right, so comments on this one is, this time of the day is, is terrible here for shortwave, but um, what I've 
if I have a complaint is that the, the tuning is too sharp. So you have to be very, very careful and slow and patient when you tune it. But when it picks up a station, the result is actually quite strong. There isn't much happening at the moment. It's uh, you know, what, three in the afternoon, four in the afternoon. We're in the middle of a rainstorm out here. Yes, we do get rain in Madeira. Um, bad news for the tourists, but hey, we live here. We need water. So we do, uh, you know, we don't have, we don't, we're not picking up much at this, at this time anyway, but we'll just try a medium wave here. This does have a ferret antenna, but again, not much happening at the moment. In the evening, I actually pick up some pretty decent stuff here from the Canary Islands. This is the one local station, believe it or not. Right, so what do I think about this guy? I want to do another one. I, I really want to do more of these small sets. I think they're neat. I think they look good. I think they fit anywhere a lot simpler and easier than some of those big monsters that I've done. Um, I thought that I'd probably not enjoy it so much, but I have. It's been a, a slightly discombobulated um, restoration, this one. It hasn't gone through, you know, the organized steps that I've done in the past. Uh, mainly because I underestimated it. I, I, I thought this would be a lot simpler and then I found a few problems and somebody would messed with the, with the IF cans and, and, and the IF can uh, screw, you know, the core didn't have a thread like a normal screw thread or anything like that. It had a hexagon positive, so you've got to get a, a female hexagonal nut thing. So it, it, it was a little, a little challenging and I... Um, I think that um, the next one I do, I'll probably approach it with a little bit more respect, I think, uh, because now I realize this thing deserves it. And these little, they call them kitchen radios, I believe, in those days, they, they definitely deserve it because they are pretty, pretty good. Um, a lot better, a lot better than I expected. So that's another one done. And um, I think this one's going to stay in the family actually what am i saying i've got 16 of them in the family once i i restore them i, I don't seem to be able to let them go but i think this one's going to get daily use as well uh, like some of the other ones that i have different places my office home uh, bedroom wherever i'm going to end up with one of these in each bloody room in the house but anyway while my wife allows it i'll keep pushing the envelope so once again, thanks very much for your patience. I hope you've enjoyed the series. Um, I've got another one in the, in the pipeline. Guess what? It's also a German radio. Big surprise. I just want to mention something else. During the set, I did a few small videos, how-to videos, some of them not so small, uh, about different things that I do when I'm doing the restoration. And uh, the reason I did those separate videos, and I call them how-tos, and, and the series is called uh, restoration building blocks. It's actually one of the playlists that you find uh, listed down below. Um, there are various small videos on different aspects of restoration where I've videoed myself doing things that in the past people have asked me about. And the idea is that when I go through the restoration process, I don't like taking too long on cleaning a, a knob or, a, you know, stuffing a capacitor or you know, reforming a filter capacitor. And by the way, reforming on this thing worked very well. There's no hum. Um, so what I did, diff different videos, and they're listed below in a playlist called Building Blocks. And anybody interested, while I'm going through this, you can actually go down and see one of the videos that will give you detail, probably on a different radio, but give you detail on how I do parts of the restoration. And the idea is to make the actual process more streamlined. It makes it a lot easier to work the, the, the restoration itself, because you're not stopping to video all the time. Um, and some of it, for people who have seen it before, can be quite boring. Uh, I have to admit, I've been through various phases in this, in this hobby. Initially, I'd watch everything because I needed to learn. And then things just became a little bit repetitive, so I would skip forward. And if, in effect, what I'm doing with these videos, by having those building blocks, it allows me to naturally skip forward and mention that I restuffed the capacitor C below, or mention that I 
reform the filter capacitors, and you can see that below. So people who are interested can go and see that. And I'll continue to do that with, with the other restorations as I go along. New aspects come up, and new topics come up, and new challenges come up. So I'll be doing little more, more little videos called Building Blocks and adding to that playlist, which I hope will end up being quite comprehensive and, and quite, uh, quite interesting for anybody who wants to learn some of the stuff. Right, once again, thank you. Bye for now. See you soon.